Welcome to Storyteller TV. Classic children's stories from around the world. Dot and the Kangaroo, part three, Dot finds her way home. On the morning of Dot's third day in the bush, the sun rose all gold and crimson on a bright, fresh, sweet-smelling world. The crickets chirruped, frogs croaked, and the birds sang. Perhaps among the birds, was Willy Wagtail, who knew Dot's way home. The kangaroo was very weary after escaping the Aborigine hunters and fighting off their dogs, so Dot walked instead of riding in the pouch, and by noon she was tired herself. When they reached a shady spot, the kangaroo said, You rest here, Dot. I'll go and look for Willy Wagtail while you have a little nap. Dot wasn't so afraid now of being alone in the bush, and she laid herself down and quickly fell asleep. But her dreams were confused and strange. There seemed to be great crowds of murmuring voices. As she woke, she realised the voices were real. There was a great hubbub. This isn't your place. Go over there. Has anyone seen Wombat? Who's going to be judge? Dot sat up and gazed around her. Nearly every creature she'd ever heard of seemed to be there. Cranes, swans and the pelican, the wallaby, the bandicoot, the possum, the koala and a rainbow of brightly coloured screaming parrots. Oh, oh, how kind of you all to come and see me, cried Dot. The animals were instantly silent and the pelican waddled forward. We are here to put you on trial, he said, for the wrongs humans have done to the bush creatures. We will be fair and just. I'll put the charges. Cockatoo will be the judge. The birds over there are the jury. Oh, oh how funny, said Dot. Not a bit frightened. She loved all the creatures so much that she couldn't believe any of them wanted to hurt her. It isn't funny at all, said the magpie. Look, the prisoner is scratching the judge's head. The cockatoo at once remembered he was judge, and Dot stopped scratching his head feathers. Call the kookaburra. Two of his kind were shot last week by white humans. The kookaburra, who had saved Dot from the snake when she was first lost, sat in a tree and laughed softly. <laughs> Why don't you call the platypus first? The humans dig up his home and, and plague him with questions. <laughs> platypus won't come, cried the rat. He says he's got more ancestors than us all. Well... Call Koala, said the pelican. The humans put him into zoos. Uh, oh, um, uh, uh, this, this trial uh, makes my head feel um, uh, empty, oh, said the koala, and he fell asleep in the gum tree. Then call Kangaroo to give evidence, cried the pelican. She suffers most. The humans hunt her and skin her and make boots and soup out of her. Ha, 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 it 
That's no good, laughed the kookaburra. Kangaroo and Dot are great friends. She won't speak against the little human. <laughs> Is it possible, said the pelican, has the kangaroo forgiven the hunting? Yes, chuckled the kookaburra. Then I give up. And the trial came noisily to an end. Just then, the kangaroo bounded into the glade, panting with excitement. Dot! Dot! she cried. I found Willy Wagtail, and he knows your way. Then putting Dot into her pouch, she leaped clean over the judge and carried Dot far away. Soon they could hear the clickety-clack, clickety-clack of Willy Wagtail's song. What a fuss there's been about you! he said. Such a lot of humans searching, and they're all so miserable and tired. It's late now, but tomorrow you must follow me past the line of oak trees over there. Your home is that way. Dot and the kangaroo talked until late that night. When you go, said the gentle creature, it'll be like losing my little Joey all over again. In the morning, Dot and the kangaroo, guided by Willy Wagtail, reached an open plain and met an emu. It was a clear sign that humans were nearby because emus love to live near flocks of sheep. <laughs> I'm going to drink at the sheep's water tank now, said the big bird. You could come with me, but the humans have put down poison to keep kangaroos away. They don't mind emus. They like to eat our eggs too much. They only kill us when we dance among their sheep. Oh, oh I wonder why sheep are so exciting. Oh, look at that flock over there. Oh, I can hardly keep my feet still. As they approached the house, Dot and the kangaroo could see a man near the house carrying a gun. Suddenly, he peered into the bush. Well, fancy a kangaroo coming so near the house, he exclaimed. A woman came to the door, covered her eyes against the sun and looked out into the bush. The next instant, the kangaroo bounded into the paddock and Dot's father raised his gun to shoot. But her mother ran forward and pushed it away. No, she shouted as the gun fired harmlessly into the air. Look, it's Dot! The little girl had just tumbled out of the kangaroo's pouch. Arms outstretched, she ran to them and they picked her up and hugged her and kissed her. Dot's mother began to cry out of sheer happiness and that made Dot cry too. Even her father dabbed at his eyes as he cuddled the little daughter he had thought was dead. Oh, I don't understand, he kept saying. How could you possibly? Oh, I've got so much to tell you, Daddy, laughed Dot. But first, you must come and stroke my kangaroo. You nearly shot her. And she was the one who saved me and brought me home. Promise me you'll never, never hurt a kangaroo again, or any other bush creature. Oh, I promise, darling, he said, and gave Dot another big kiss. All the while, the good kangaroo sat on her haunches, panting with fear since the bang of the gun. But she saw that Dot's father was truly grateful and would keep his promise. As all the humans went indoors, still laughing and hugging one another, she hopped to the window for a glimpse of the home where Dot lived. While she was peering in, something very strange happened. Out of the open door hopped a little Joey. With a hop, skip and a jump, it landed itself in the kangaroo's warm pouch. Dot's mother glanced up and saw the little grey face poking out of the pouch. Why, your kangaroo's got our little Joey, the one Jack found after the kangaroo hunt last week. Looking round, Dot saw the kangaroo and the tiny Joey. It's her lost baby, she cried. They found each other. Oh, now we're all so happy. But there was sadness in Dot's heart when at sunset she waved goodbye to the kangaroo and saw her dear friend hop away into the twilight. 
Still, she wouldn't go far. From now on, their neighbourhood would always be a safe place for the birds and animals of the Australian bush.